I am Seema and welcome to part 7 of the chapter Thermodynamics. In part 6, I told you about the applications of first law of thermodynamics and I said that the applications would be in work and in terms of heat. We would like to study this further. So we had started discussing the applications of the first law in terms of work. And I explained to you that uh, the expansion or contraction, that is pressure volume work, uh, is done by, uh, by thermodynamic systems. And we discussed a situation where we took uh, one mole of an ideal gas in a cylindrical jar, which was attached with a, a frictionless piston. And since the volume of the gas in the jar was more than 22.4 liters, we allowed the atmospheric pressure, which was more, to push down the piston. So the piston was pushed down in one step and till the external pressure, that is one atmospheric pressure, became equal to the internal pressure of the gas. That is where an equilibrium was achieved. And then we calculated the uh, work done in this process. I'll just insert an image of yesterday's uh, class so that you can, uh, you would be reminded of what we did. We are moving on with the same situation now that we have one mole of a gas, of an ideal gas in the cylinder. But then in the second situation in part 6, I explained to you that if the change had not occurred in one step and rather would have occurred in multiple steps, for example, I made this curve here showing to you that initial volume was here and it changed not in one step but in abrupt different steps. So how would you calculate the work done from VI to VF? Then we said we would divide this into different parts and we would calculate the work done at every stage and the sum, that is the summation of all of these would be the total work done. And if you really see the work, since since this work is an internal, it causes a change in internal energy, which is a state function. So irrespective of whether it took place in one step or it took place in many steps, the internal energy change would still be the same. So this is what we understood. Now we come to the next situation. In this next situation, we are carrying out the same change. That is now, the uh, we have the cylinder, we have one mole of gas, the same change has to occur. But instead of these abrupt changes, we let us imagine that every point in time, the piston, the pressure, the external pressure was only slightly more than the internal pressure. When this happens, what would happen? If I have to enter a room in one step, I just go. But if I have to enter the other room slowly in slow steps, what would I do? I would, it would be small movement, movement in small, 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 small parts until all of me goes into the other room. It is somewhat like that. That now the same process is occurring, but not in a finite number of steps not in a, in, the, in a number of steps that can be counted, but in an infinite number of steps, many, 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 many steps. And at each step, what is happening? The pressure outside, the external pressure is only slightly more than the internal pressure in, at every step. As a result of which, what happens? The piston moves down just very little, very little, very little, very little, very little, very little and it goes on in many, many steps until it reaches the volume Vf. So what is happening in this situation? When you have an infinitesimally small amount of pressure difference, so what would be the difference between the internal pressure and external pressure? And how would you calculate? Now, you in this case, where you had a finite number of steps, you could have found a sum of them. Here, the steps are not finite. So what would you do? You would find the integral. So how would you calculate work? Work would be the integral of Vi to Vf are the limits, P external into dV. This you already know. Now I've used a small d here because now there we use delta. Delta is a larger quantity, a finite. This dV is a very, very minuscule quantity, very small uh, quantity. So now the work done would be equal to work done for if this because the steps are really, really small. 
so the work done would be an, the integral and let me remind you we use a negative sign it is the negative integral why do we use a negative sign let me remind you once more that when we are causing the contraction of the gas the final volume is actually less than the initial volume right so what would be the value of delta v or dv that you would get the value of if vf and delta v or dv is vf minus vi so you will get a negative value for delta v or dv and in if work is being done on the system by convention we said work is said to be positive and if work is done by the system we believe that internal energy is lost therefore work should be should have a negative value in order to get that negative value or positive value because dv is going to give us the opposite sign if there was uh, instead of contraction it was expansion then the value of dv would have been positive if the value of dv or delta v would have been positive then we want work to be negative so in that case also we would have to use a negative sign so that is why whenever you are calculating work you always use that negative sign we did that in this case we did that in the first case where the change took place in one step also so now having understood this we now know that when a process takes place in many steps then work would be equal to vi to vf integral of p external that is the external pressure into dv where the change in the volume is very very small the small d represents a very small change now here what is p external we are talking of the same case where the contraction is occurring constantly slowly in such small steps that you cannot even see the difference in the steps because at every moment in time as the one step finishes as the extra pressure outside is due to it the piston moves slightly inwards and equilibrium is achieved between the internal pressure and external pressure and by then a little more pressure develops so it pushes it further again an equilibrium establish establishes and then again the pressure becomes slightly more so there is a constant increase in pressure outside external pressure which is causing the piston to move constantly in a slow or constantly and slowly to that vf volume vf so we say external pressure so would at any time would be equal to p internal plus a very small amount of pressure which is equal to db in the case of contraction but imagine p if the instead of contraction it was expansion that was occurring in the same manner when it was taking place in lots of lots of steps what would happen at any moment of time when expansion would be occurring you would expect the external pressure to be equal to slightly less that is dp less than the internal pressure so in that case external pressure would be p internal minus dp okay now you can use a common expression for this saying that p external could be equal to p internal plus minus dp so that's a common expression that is used and when do we use this common expression imagine now that the change is occurring and the pressure the contraction is happening and the pressure is p internal plus dp at every stage suddenly one step comes when the pressure internal the external pressure becomes equal to p internal minus dp in a certain step what will happen in that step instead of the piston moving slightly inwards this time the piston moves slightly backwards so what do we see the change that occurred due to a difference of just a very small amount of pressure dp it could change its direction instead of contraction now expansion was occurring such a change where due to a very small amount of difference in a quantity in this case it is pressure the change can be reversed is known as a reversible process it is known as a reversible process so when we use this common expression this would be an expression for a reversible process where the external pressure at all times is equal to internal pressure plus minus dp at every stage there will be an equilibrium and there would be a possibility of the reaction moving in either direction 
If in that instant the direction is minus dp, then it would be expansion, it would start expanding. And if at a certain instant it is plus dp, p internal plus dp, it would cause contraction. Isn't this interesting? So now we get this expression that p external is equal to p internal plus minus dp for a reversible change or a reversible process. So that is what we are discussing here now, a reversible process. So we said that for a process which takes place in infinitesimally small steps, the work we calculated was equal to the integral of p external d. And p external we have calculated to be equal to p internal plus minus dp. So let us substitute this. When we do that now, now this work would be work for a reversible change. This was, a, this was work for a change that was occurring in infinitesimally small steps. But it was taking place in one direction. But if we are talking of a reversible process, then we have to take into consideration this plus minus situation. That the pressure could be slightly more, it could be slightly less. So the work of a reversible process would now be equal to negative integral of vi and vf are the limits. p internal plus minus dp, we have substituted p internal and p external into dv. So now we see that dp is a very, very small quantity and dv also is extremely small quantity of volume. So the product of extremely, almost negligible quantities, the product of these two would also be negligible. So for all practical purposes, if you are really calculating the work of a reversible process, it is not this amount which is going to affect that work. It is rather this product that is p internal into dv and the integral of this. It is this quantity which would actually give you the value of the work. So we ignore the product of dp and dv and from that we get now that work reversible would be equal to the negative integral of vi to vf that is the limits p internal into d. Now I would like to bring you back to the same situation where I told you that we took an ideal gas, one mole of an ideal gas in a cylinder. So it when we are studying thermodynamics, we are not actually interested in the external pressure. I told you, whatever the surroundings are, we somehow try to focus on the system and not the surroundings. So in order to bring our focus back to the system, our calculations should deal with internal pressure, internal volume and not with the external, not about the surroundings. So in order to do that now, what do we do? We say that this gas that we took, this is the P internal now. So this gas that we took was an ideal gas. And since it was an ideal gas, it should the equation, ideal gas equation should be applicable to it. So PV should be equal to NRT for an ideal gas. According to this, we can calculate, rearranging this, we can calculate P. Therefore, P would be equal to NRT upon V. So if pressure is equal to NRT, now what pressure is this? This pressure would be the internal pressure because inter internal means inside the cylinder and inside the cylinder is where we have the ideal gas. So we will substitute this value for the internal pressure in this equation. So work reversible becomes equal to minus integral of NRT upon V. So into dV and we divide V by this so that we can remove the sign of integration. So when you get this situation and the limits are of volume, the same quantity, we can remove the sign of integration and we get which would be equal to minus. The minus is not to be forgotten in your calculations because if you do not put this minus in your numerical problems, you're going to get the wrong sign and although the amount would be right, the sign being wrong, your work done on the system or by the system would be wrong and you'd lose marks there. So this would be equal to NRT log of VF, we now put the limits here, removing the sign of integration, VF upon VI. But we do not want log in LN, we want it in base 10. So in order to do that, in order to change LN to log to the base 10, we multiply whatever quantity you have with 2.303. So 
that is what we do here. So work reversible becomes equal to, minus remains there, multiply this entire quantity by 2.303 nRT and log becomes log LOG which is to the base 10 Vf upon Vi. So this is the equation that you would use to calculate the work in a reversible process. Now in the next video, I'm going to continue with this uh, same situation and this time we are going to do uh, free expansion and we are going to do isothermal and free expansion of a gas. Right? And after that we move on to the next application of uh, the first law of thermodynamics that is in terms of heat which we call enthalpy. So this was all for uh, this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.